anybody who's listening to this, you can be whatever you want to be, but you can't bullshit the Thanks process. For with us. 106 and Park was created by me. By me. The music by is all about information. All about the information position about information. don't give you the power. The information gives you the power. I think we're going through a creative pandemic right now. If you moved on 10 or 15 or 20 years after me, why is you talking about me? Tupac Shakur, when he rocked this world, he'll pull up to your house with your boyfriend in there. Yo, this is Big U. I just finished the guy show. Check me out tonight. I'll get slapped. <laughs> What's up? It's your girl Tamara, aka Girl from Harlem. And this is Ray Daniels, aka the Culture Referee. And this is the God Show. Book, 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 book. But guess where we at? LA. So. Obviously, they see we're not on our set. We somewhere, <laughs> we somewhere nice and tucked off. It's I feel like we are in Guitar Center and we are talking to the manager and he's about to educate us because this dude has a whole setup in his house. Like he's a real producer. We're in the house of a real producer. Like really. I have to stress that real producer. Yeah, we surrounded by. I've music never seen as many keyboards that. in Let's one get place it. that wasn't selling keyboards. <laughs> okay, so introduce them. Let them know who we sitting down. So with. we sitting down with the the legendary Indeed. Jeff Giddy. Uh, let's give it up for Jeff Giddy. Everybody, Woo! give it up for Jeff Giddy. We can do that. We can do that. Uh, legendary producer, purist. When I think about Jeff, that's the first word come to my mind. Purist, like puts the music first. Mm. Would that be a good guess, uh, guess, guess, guesstimation, my brother? It's a very flattering. I just yeah. feel like I'm around a purist. Like, I like being around purists. Yeah, and no, I appreciate that. It, it's, it's interesting you say that. It's not that I try to be to be a purist, you know. I feel like it's just uh, a lot of the things that inspire me are, are, are you know, old school music. Real. Maybe classic music, things that live on forever. You know what I'm saying? Uh never die and so if that makes me a purist be so let it be so but i will say this i think this business that we're in i think it's about really adapting evolving and being like water flowing and rolling with the punches so a lot of times i'm in situations that maybe i have to adapt and maybe the way i'm making music is not the most pure got you we're gonna get into that. I love that. Right, I love that. You're I love one that of the you most went there. Diverse. I love that. I love that you went there. I love that you went there. Yeah, he jumped right in. Tamir, you can go ahead. I'm gonna throw it to he, you. Let's go. I don't even. He jumped right in. He's one of the most diverse people in the game. You wrote for literally everybody. So you started your career. You actually went to school for music, despite having a family background in music. You actually went to school. So tell me how you think actually going to school for music impacted your journey. No, I think I think you know it was it was. It was a really academic period of my life, and and it was it was uh, educational, but it was actually, it it was a little challenging and, and frustrating at times. But I think you know to answer your question, I think the most uh, uh, beneficial thing from going to school was really just the community with my friends and other mm. musicians, and I feel like that was the first time in my life. I understood about relationships and networking and, and just having a camaraderie and a collaborative spirit and how far that, how much further that can take you than just working by yourself. So I think all that education, all those years of school, I think if I learned anything just by being around my peers, okay, it was worth it. But let me tell you, straight out of school, he went to work with somebody legendary. So right out the gate, he started working with Lauren Hill. Tell us a little bit how that came to be and that process. Nah, it, yeah, it was it was crazy because um, people ask me, it, it's just crazy how the choices you make in your life are mm -hmm. like a domino effect. And it just, so... When I was in school, there was, there was, oh, it's like, it's, I feel like music business sometimes is like high school, but like college was an extension of high school. Like you had the popular yes. ones, you had the popular musicians that were like, everybody knew of them as the all-stars, they're going to be famous. And then you had the other, you know what I'm saying, folks that were just, just working, a work in progress, you know what I mean? And uh, so, what, what, couple, there, there was a couple of friends of mine that they weren't like necessarily all-stars, but we, we just always... They were cool dudes. We always hung and, and worked on music together. And it was crazy. I graduated from college and I moved back in with my parents and I was doing the same things I was doing when I was in high school. So in some ways I was like, damn, what am I doing? And then, you know <laughs> I mean? I'm literally in, in, in the same, rehearsing with the same band I was playing when I was in, in high school. Yeah. So wow. took a step back almost in my mind and I got a call from my boy who from college 
Who I'm like, what can he possibly? You know what I'm saying? I'll yeah. call him back. It's not important. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when I went to the restroom, I checked my messages. He was like, bro, you got to come to Boston right now. Lauren Hill's here. She's having auditions. She's asking. She asked me if I knew any guitar players. So you got to. I said, what? Okay. I literally, <laughs> that was my moment. And I was like, I and was what? Really, and what year was this? What Lauren Hill? 2005. Okay, cool. Gotcha. So this was six years after the release. This is like the album. comeback. This yeah. is like her coming back. This was about a year. This was a year or two after the the unplugged album. Got gotcha. Still, she was still in that unplugged era. Yeah, and stuff. for sure. So, so man, like I literally got in my car and just drove to Boston, like from the rehearsal. Just literally mm. got in my car and drove to Boston. I I uh, met Lauren um, in, in the studio. It was just me and a couple other people. She asked me to play something. I, what did you I play? Played it. She, she was. Well, it's funny. Good but, question. Not because I go no, lie. No, that's I, amazing because it's, it's, it's actually. Because I, I damn near wanted him to play it for us. Like I want to <laughs> like, see. Yeah, I want to see. No, no. But also, that shit, it was, yeah, it was. It was. That's a deep question, actually, because um, at the time I, I was like a musical nerd, and so one of the things I was getting into is like like African uh, folk music, mm. and, and like so she asked me if, if I knew how to play. It, randomly, she asked me if I knew how to play. Like any any African stuff on the guitar, so I was like, "Oh, what bet? Let's go!" And she was like, "Oh, okay." And then so when I started playing acoustic, she was like, "Okay." And then so literally that was maybe seven p.m. And then we stayed up making music till maybe eleven a.m. Oh, because I got a day. question: Is wow. your hair? Is your hair long? Nah, nah. This is because I'm looking because I'm looking hair. at you right now, and I'm imagining you. So first of all, let me just shout out Jeff. I got I got to take thirty seconds. I got to shout you out. Because this business has a way of, it's very much like high school, but it has a way of making you feel like every this business is the only thing that matters, and then everything else after that comes. And when I walked up to his house, while we had a studio, all I saw was things letting you know that he had kids. Mm -hmm. And as a father, and as someone who feels like my kids lend me to the business, you know what I mean? Sometimes we lend ourselves to our family. I just want to give you props for the playground, for the cars, for everything, because you can tell who's a father that cares. So I got to shout you out on that I first. I appreciate that, man. Thank you now, so much. That's why I remember I, I had to shout you out because sometimes you meet people and it's like, do you have a soul? And not only that, there have been brothers that have killed themselves. There have been people that are dealing with mental health issues all through this game. And I think the answer to that is being able to check out and check in with something that really matters because your kids don't care if you have a hit on the radio your kids your your, your family don't care if you have a hit they don't all they care about is <laughs> i want to be with you and that's it so kudos to you my brother I appreciate now that. tamira so we can go back to what we were talking about no no back to what i was saying so no, I know what i'm looking no, no i'm looking at you so I, I, my segue was this i'm looking at you and i'm like he has kids so obviously that means you have to go to their school and when you go to the school, I'm looking at like the other parents got to look at you like, man, what the hell do you do? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like when I walk to my kids, they look at me like, what the hell do you do? So I'm looking at you like you look like you either growing weed. <laughs> you like you either growing weed or you are a musician. And maybe both. And listen, if it's I like both. both. I know it's we got elementary right? outside, so I know you know how to grow things. So you just look like one of the two. So I'm just imagining like how how that experience is. You walking into Lauren Hill, and you know this game. We judge you. You know, we yeah. look at you like, oh, this yeah. guy has on slacks. What does hey. he know about? So I, she probably was trying you. Like, let me see this white boy know about some African folk music. And you, that's why I wanted to know the song, because I'm pretty sure you had to blow them the fuck away. Nah, you know, it, again, it, it's just, yes. It, it was one of those things, and, and um, I, I truly believe sometimes what we do is a lifestyle. It's not like something. Because, mm -hmm. look, I'm driving over from Boston, two-and-a-half-hour ride. Yeah. I'm, like, driving, smoking, like, because... <laughs> Lauren was a huge, huge yeah, influence on me. Of course, me. you know, uh, if, without getting too graphic, some of my first romantic experiences with with Lauren's music in the nice. background. <laughs> so, like, I'm like, here I am driving. This is my chance to to really, you know, my yeah. first audition for a real for one of my heroes and and uh, a real opportunity. But so I'm sitting there thinking, like, okay, what well, should should I think? Like, should I think of something? Should I know what to what to play? But so that moment when she asked me to, and first she said, now I remember, first she said you. You ever play flamenco music, you know? On flamenco, a, on yes. Acoustic, and I'm like, so it was one of those moments like you prepare for it every day. It's a mm -hmm. lifestyle. You wake up every day. And so there's nothing you could do at that moment to just, it's either you sink or you swim. You get yeah. thrown in the deep end. And that's what she did. Yeah. And honestly, is that sometimes the truest form of ourselves yeah. through, through improvisation? That's the great, that's, that's it's funny because you say you was driving two and a half hours. And I know for a fact, 
in your head you knew I'm coming to get this job. Like I don't oh, yeah. like it was no doubt in your mind. Like yeah. I was like you driving, you like I'm ready for any moment. I don't give a damn what they said. Can you play this? I already knew because you was prepared. Yeah, yeah. So, man, yeah, that that was a crazy experience. And and then uh, you know I stayed. Uh, it was. I mean, just to keep it real, it was it was a very humbling experience too because I did get the job. Yeah. And then they called me about a week later and asked me to come and audition um, for the band in New York. Yeah. And those were pretty pretty brutal gruesome uh, uh uh auditioning process you know yeah. what i mean and i made it through that through the month and yeah but it, it was one of those things that it humbled me and Wait, it was a month of audition yeah listen there's nothing i could say about that situation that hasn't been said already in, in other interviews so yeah. you know I, I i will say this to be grateful for it is sometimes you, you need to go through some challenging um yes. experiences in this business because it it really it prepares, you. It prepares yeah. you and so it's crazy because sometimes I, you know, I have, we all have, you know, our assistants, our kids, people we mentor, and sometimes yeah. I just want to help them and skip them across, skip them in the line, Can't and just the and when I do that, that's gonna give them. That's gonna I always say, I always, have, I always say, the worst thing you could do for something is love it, because when you love it, you want to love it through the process, and the process is not love. The process is ugly. The process is tears. The process is going through it. So. Bro, that's literally what I did. No, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Because yeah. like sometimes it's like, damn, I love it too much. I gotta let it go and let it grow. Mm. So that's I get it. I love yeah. it. To, well, uh, I got a question. Go ahead, so Tamara. as being like literally, we already kind of touched on it. Being one of the most diverse people in the game. Um, so when you're writing music, because you 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 could go from Gunna to <laughs> Luma Hill yeah. to her. So how what is your music writing process what does that look like like do you say do you write with somebody in mind or like just walk me through that you know it's, it's um interesting because uh when i my 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 way of approaching it is like i don't want to just give somebody something they've already done before mm. so i i truly believe as a creator our responsibility is to really kind of go a step beyond so if i'm writing for an artist gonna let's say i'm not gonna just I'm gonna I'm gonna be familiar with this catalog as much as I can, but I'm not just gonna go and just replicate what they've done. Mm, I have to yes. st think a step beyond and be creative and be like, you know, what haven't they done? What where can they go? Even if it's a little uncomfortable. For yeah. Them. My my process is I would like to offer something that maybe you might not uh, naturally go to, or something a pocket of your sound that you haven't explored well, yet. Well, the songs are like y'all our babies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like. I'm not gonna give you the same kids that you got with this person. I'm mm. gonna give you. It's gonna be some Jeff Giddy Gunner kids. It's gonna be some Jeff Giddy Lauren Hill kids. It's yeah. not gonna be Lauren Hill and Salam Remy kids. Because if that was the case, then you would go to Salam Remy. Exactly. That's what I mean by purist. Exactly. Like I could. I know that you are purist. Talk, dog. For he worked with Tehran, my guy, and Tehran called me like blown away. Oh wow. Like great. That fucking. You know that fucking white boy's incredible, bro. <laughs> he's fucking neat, nah. motherfucker. He crazy, bro. I was like, like that. He's like, bro. And then you know, Tab was like, I told you, I, mean, I told you, like Ray, I wouldn't ask you for nothing if it wasn't that. I told you. So, I, I, you know, I appreciate and, that, and, and that's important. That you know, in this game, man, our reputation is everything. So, but I, I wanted to ask you something. You come in as a musician. Do you know the entire time my plan is to be a producer? This, I love that you asked that question, man. That's a, a big part of my story, and I, I I love sharing this part, and I love inspiring people. It took me ten years to reinvent myself, man. Mm. Ten years, man. I was, I I knew I was writing and I was singing and and writing songs and making beats at that time. Before, yeah. Before since I was a kid, so when I when I got in that studio that night with Lauren, we were writing. Yeah. And then after that, I transitioned. It's crazy. Uh, I transitioned and I ended up working with Alicia and I was her guitar player. And the oh, whole wow. time, the whole time, I'm like, okay, how could I? When I got in, the bass player was already writing work. Yeah. So I'm like, if you're a musician, you you always try to elevate. So when I get in, everybody's like, oh yeah, get in line. You know what I'm saying? Like we all trying to. Start and it's, some, and it's something credits. I got. It's something I got to tell. It's something that's very important that that you have to know, Tamira, and everybody who's listening, is that you have the 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 journey from musician to producer is so hard. Mm -hmm. Here's why. Because I can come in the room and tell Jeff, you're going to come in here and do exactly what you do as a producer, but you're going to do it as my guitar player. Yeah. And he wouldn't get publishing unless I was a really nice guy. He would just get paid union rates. Wait, so is, work for wait, hire. Yeah. Work for hire. And I'm be real. I, I love this conversation, yeah. man, because this I'm getting goosebumps right now because this has been one of the biggest achievements of my career is to do I, this I, I, and and to your point 
either you're a work for hire and you don't get publishing, or I'm gonna give you a little publishing, but I'm the one that I'm the one that produced it. it. I'm getting the advance. I'm getting the points. I'm getting the credit for it. And so I dealt with a lot of that. And you know, at the time, person that was managing me was like, "Bro, just go in there and get the money." I was like, "No, nah, nah. Mm. This is the because once you you gotta make somebody sees you." As a guitar player, oh, you're gonna have to work way harder it's kinda to, like, it's to have them see you as not it's that. It's kind of like it's kind of like mm. trying to be a wife, or the putting giving the milk for free. Mm-hmm. It's like the minute Why that I can I get you to come in here and play a riff for me, is the minute that and you accept that is the minute that I'm like, I'm a fucking producer, That's my guitar player. And once yeah. they once he get that on it, so what happens now is is that. Put, you're gonna have people that's gonna like almost like put him under them. Exactly. Like, oh, you want Jeff Giddy? That's my guitar player. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna bring him. I'm yeah. the producer though. Yeah. So now he comes in, he might get paid. Right. Like I said, if it's, they really nice to you, they might give you a couple um, publishing, no production credit, do some publishing. Yeah. Oh, nah, this is a, it's As a dirty game. As a person who, you yeah. made no, the damn music. No, it's, no, 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 but it's, it's, it's a it's, dirty game, but it goes yeah. back to how. <laughs> But I want to talk about the manager because you said that your manager kind of tried to tell you to just go no, get it. No, I don't, I, listen, re- listen. He he did a lot he, of great things he, for he, me. He, but I'm a manager. It, he's doing his job. Mm. He basically his whole thing is at the end of the day, you gotta understand something. It's a gamble. His whole thing is is, yo, Jeff, you might be a big producer. I know that's what you want, but right now you they're calling you for this. <laughs> yeah. And do you want to keep the lights on? So he has to take a stand. Mm. Yeah. I am a producer, and my stand was exactly that. I. I, I began my career as a published writer by saying, if I can't get, pu- I started with publishing. Yep. I said, okay, I don't need the production credit, of whatever. Let me get 5%. Let me get yeah. two and a half. Exactly. Let me get five. Because not that I'm finessing the game, but I know I'm going to be doing some original melodies on it. I know I'm going to be, you know, and if yeah. you're programming the drums and you're getting, I have nothing wrong with that, but why, if I'm doing original melodies and yeah. I'm helping some of these things turn into choruses, why am I not? So I said, you know what? I'll only come in and do it if I get a little bit. And yeah. sometimes people will be like, yeah. Other times people will be like, no. Nah. I'm like, you know what? I'm cool. I actually would recommend. I'm like, you know what? I got my boy. He plays guitar. You can, if you need somebody, but if you want me. And then so that's how I start. I start collecting my five. Then I start collecting my seven. And I have then a ten. And before you know it. It's I like, and, it's like, and, like, and they're like, hey, have him come back. Right. Tell him to come back. I need to work with him. But here's the thing. This is, the, this is something about the music business that is so messed up that we don't talk about enough. You have people who are musicians, real musicians, that be that have done it the right way, went to Berkeley College like yourself, learned everything, and because they didn't pick up, learn something as simple as logic, they're just musicians. Mm-hmm. And then but, you got people who come in the room as, like you got somebody who has no talent, but knows how to program, or even knows how to just, that's why I would say it's very important, the, the, the key to the music business is knowing how the money flows. Because if you don't know how the money flow, you could everybody in the room ain't equal. When R. Yeah. Kelly had the chocolate factory, people don't understand. R. Kelly wasn't playing nothing. He had musicians, guitar boys, yeah. people like that who were like in the room giving him riffs and he was writing it, but because he was the organizer, it was his. So that's important to talk about because that journey is not talked about enough in our business, bro. Yeah, but you, you know, I, maybe I'm going to accept it, but you know, I, I don't believe that every great virtuoso from Berkeley School of Music could, could manage a product. For sure. You know what I'm saying? And I believe that sometimes somebody don't even know how to, like, look look at Rick Rubin. He don't know how to program, but he knows really how to manage a exactly. product and deliver. So I do believe those are two separate roles. And from somebody who came from Berkeley, like, a lot, unfortunately, a lot of musicians don't think that way. You know what I'm saying? They, a lot of musicians don't think as leaders. They don't think yeah. as... Yeah, alpha, alpha talents. Yeah, and... and I remember being a kid and, and somebody just said, oh, yo, you got talent. You just got to figure out how to, how to market yourself, you know? And I feel like, yeah, it's a different game, branding yourself. And, and yeah, a lot of times I feel like I'm overqualified. Like, and that's beautiful. It's the tip of the iceberg. Like, if I use only 3% of my talent, but I have a pool 97% more, I oh can pull from. God. But if God. I could just figure out how to just use that, you know what I'm saying, to, to really, to that smallest common denominator. What yes. is that? thing that everybody who works at a factory or somebody who works here can really hear in a song or in a piece yeah. of music and really relate to it. Yeah. That's harder for me, man. That's yeah. and that's harder for a lot of us musicians to exactly. do is I don't like saying dumbing it down. I just like really just saying just maybe targeting. I, mm-hmm. I, I don't like saying dumbing it down. I, I always say 
give them what they want. I always say it's two types of creatives, the type that creates for other creatives and the types that creates for the people. And if you're creating for other creatives, like, I mean, dog, like if you, you, cre I can, you can create for other creatives. It's, you can look in the room and tell, but then the gift is knowing what the people want. Like Rick Rubin mm -hmm. might not understand certain things, but he might know how to say, take that out. We don't need all that. Like, bro, you're listening from the, per the people's experience. So I just give you props for that because that's a journey. Like most people don't make it to the other side. By the way, Dr. Luke did. I don't know if you know that Dr. Luke was exactly. a uh, he, he was a guitar, guitar player exactly, on Saturday yeah. Night Live for ten that. years. Never knew that. Yeah, he was a guitar player on Saturday Night Live yep. for ten years and was fighting and literally was hustling to get in the room. When I say hustling, I don't mean like hustling beats. I mean like selling weed to get in the room with producers to be considered a producer. So that shit is hard, man. That's a whole nother journey. That's a whole nother. But conversation. if you're already familiar with the industry and you're already like. To me, it, why wouldn't they accept you with open arms? It's just different. It's different. <laughs> when you, like, it's funny now because some of the same artists that <laughs> I used to work for now, I'm, now it, it, some of the same artists I used to work for before, now I'm it, kind of on the other side of it. And it's, it's just one of those things, like the band, they, they stay in that hotel. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They're on yeah. that bus. And as a producer, yeah. I'm coming to see the artist. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. oh, come to the green room. Yeah, like, exactly. It's a different. Yeah. And, and I will say this. It's not just for, <laughs> for musicians. I, I see it from engineers, people that yeah. involve. I see it from executives, yeah. people that, that start as near art, maybe want to transition to management or owning a pu yeah. owning publishing. Yeah. And I see that kind of evolution in that um like, okay, let's say if you're an AR, but you want to become a manager, you don't get a salary as a manager. So you have to really invest in yourself and you got to make sure you have enough capital to operate for a few years before the clients start bringing some mm -hmm. in. But a lot of people are not able to take that risk. Yes. Those two, three years of not sacrifice. having a, of sacrifice. Nothing. And so I don't, it don't got to be guitar. It could be anything, that kind of a, you know what, I'm going to invest in myself for a few years even if it don't work out. Yes. And yo, I fell on my ass. I fell on my face. I was an artist. I put all my money into the project. We did all this. And then, not, like, but, you know, it was time to call it quits. That, so I, I've I've spread my wings and fell on my ass before, too. And it, That is your college, bro. Yeah. That is your college. Failure. That is yeah. your college. And that's another thing. People don't understand that. You can go to college or you can pay with your time. Mm -hmm. And you pay with your time. So that you pay with both, by the way, your time, your money, yeah. and you went to college. Yeah. Yeah. But that makes your journey a little different. But dog, you gotta you gotta pay. Like you gotta pay. Dog, you let me tell you something. I'll tell people, when me and Teron and, and Timothy first started out, everybody was trying to get on Usher album. Everybody was trying to get on Akon album. Everybody was trying to get with the big guys. And my thing was, if everybody's trying, then nobody knows us. Nobody's gonna give us that credit. So I would say Who's Usher artist? Oh, Usher works on one chance. Usher cares about one chance. We're going to give one chance records. Mm. Oh, Akon got an artist named Maji. We're going to get Maji records. That's so we're gonna smart. Get, and because my thought process was he's going to hear it. Mm -hmm. And when he hear it, if it's fire, <laughs> he going to say, that. who the fuck did that? Mm. And and lo and behold, Usher is like, oh, no, nah, y'all need to come in the room with me now. Yeah, exactly. And Akon was like, what the fuck? I don't know y'all could do that. Come in the room with me. And that's how it's dog. But that was the sacrifices we had to make. While everybody was chasing the big dog, we was like, yeah. "Now nah, we gonna build, we gonna build with these little dogs because I know the big dog gonna hear it." And if I'm a big dog and I hear a little dog with a record better than me, er, stop! <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I don't care who you are. Yeah, I need you that. You can't get yeah, nothing better than yeah. you. That needs to be over here with me. Let me show you what to do with that. I might even let you stay on it, just as a fan. But nah, that needs to be my real. song. That's real. Yeah. That's real. That happens a lot. Sac we don't talk enough about sacrifices. Everybody see the work and they see everything we have and they're like, "Oh, I could do that." Dog, oh, that's not. The talent is not what made Jeff Giddy Jeff Giddy. It was the thought process to be seen mm. that made you who you are. It was the it was the fact that you knew, okay, I'm a musician, but I want to be a producer. Mm. And if I, only way I'm a, that was that's a thought process. We don't talk enough about mindset. And to me, that's what this whole show is about. Like the underdog mindset, the goat mindset. Yeah. Like the underdog mindset turns you into a goat. Yeah. Exactly. That I, I I did love the, the the Kanye documentary. That was that was the one the biggest takeaway for for me. It's not a coincidence that he was the most underrated on that label and became one of the biggest artists in the world. It was exactly because yes. he was the most slept on and underrated. And, and he knew that. And neglected. And he, exactly. he he said, "I am where I am where Jay Z and Talib Kweli meet." But I knew I couldn't be that with Talib. 
Mm. I knew I needed the cool because cool is a, is something you can't pay for. Talib was never cool. It was always real raw, but Hove was cool. And yeah. if, it's like high school, bro. Yeah. It's high yeah. school. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes you gotta dress the fucking vegetables up in candy wrapper. <laughs> That's serious. So they can open it up and exactly. see it and be like, yeah, exactly. and then they yeah. start liking it. They're like, by the way, you're eating vegetables. Get out of here. These ain't no vegetables. It's candy. No, bro. It's vegetables. And Kanye's Kanye as an adult, Kanye's uh of uh college dropout album was probably the most important album of my adulthood mm -hmm. and it was because he, he let's be honest jay-z is probably the coolest man alive him and barack obama is probably the coolest black men to ever live <laughs> that's some shit that's in you you can't pay, pay for that but when kanye made us feel like being cool being who we was was okay yes. because the cool people have the same concerns. Exactly. Mm. The underdog. The underdog. That's what I'm saying. So when I so to me, that's why the whole show is like goats and underdogs. Cause you really be seeing a goat, but every goat really feels like an underdog. That's how they became a fucking how, goat. Exactly. How do you even become <laughs> yeah, that yeah. if you don't So after watching that documentary, I'm like, damn, maybe maybe they ain't shit on me enough. Maybe like maybe you know, maybe I didn't <laughs> I gotta go through some maybe, more. Yeah, maybe I didn't fail enough. Like, okay, like yeah. I, and, and the hardest part for someone like you is and I deal with this with Tehran because I'm a manager. Even with me, the be I, I never said this on record, but I just I fuck with you. I just want to say this. I didn't do this. This podcast wasn't a money making thing. This no, wasn't a bit. You know what this podcast was? It was my way of showing people, my people who I work with, dog. If you sit in a seat confidently, people will come. Mm -hmm. Like this is just yeah. you sitting in yeah. your seat. When I came in here, usually it's me, Tamira. Uh, no, I put you, this is your seat. Cause you sit, this is a seat you built. We came to what you built. Mm -hmm. And I want people to understand it's okay to sit quiet and build. And it's hard when you look on Instagram and everybody like they partying and you're like, damn, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want. And it's like, bro, the only guys that really become legends are the guys that sit in one seat and say, I'm going to build something here. I don't know what's going to come from it, but I'm going to build it. And I got to give you kudos because that's what you did, bro. Thank you, bro. Appreciate that's it. what the fuck you did. That's why I'm like, you're a purist. Do not change that. Mm. Like, do not change that. Because even now, it's like, like I said, Tab was hit me. Jeff Giddy, Jeff, I heard your name, but I always heard it as an artist, I thought. So I knew it from, you know, you just hear your name mm. and he's like, Jeff Giddy, Jeff Giddy. And then he hit me and, and then he was like, Teron, Teron, Jeff Giddy. And I was like, Teron, hello, Tab. Tab's our brother. He got this guy he wanted to meet. And then I was like, Teron, let's just, let's just go see what's up. Teron, bro. Oh, <laughs> but that's my point though that. that's yeah. you sitting in your, that's not you out here saying i got packs for everybody that's yeah. you saying just just come just give me five minutes just pull up to me come see me for five minutes and if you don't think that i'm worth it i'm you never have yeah. to come see me again mm -hmm. but that's betting on yourself and i just got to celebrate you because that's what i'm doing Yo. as a music executive like i'm not a i don't even feel comfortable saying i'm a podcaster <laughs> the real thing is, right? You, I can't even tell you how many of my friends in the industry hit me up and, and was telling me like, "Yo, yo, you got check out, yo, look at this clip." Like, yeah. So I, you know, just yesterday, Jeff Robinson sent me something, that, yeah, um, a clip that he agreed with, and so I just feel like, you know, you, you're doing something real, and and it's the, the people are reacting to it. It's the community is, you know, but, but it's hard, by but it. it's hard to step out on your own, mm -hmm. and. Talk. It's hard to step up because then it's like if I'm filming a podcast, I'm not chasing money for my clients. And you having the conversations that I usually had behind closed doors. That's that public. was the most important thing to me. I'm like me I learn I learn more from experience. It's no book can teach you this shit, bro. Exactly. It's and, no, it's no class can teach you this. You got to go out there and get dissed. I don't know what it is about this industry particularly because I'm pretty sure yeah, even in real estate and other things like you have like there's more informative ways of educating yourself <laughs> on this in this business if you're not if you're not on the field on the ground there's no book like you said I, I i love that because as somebody who did graduate from school and spent four years in academics i, I feel like i learned in one day it, it working in los angeles more than i i could ever in a that's lifetime learn in school and and that's not to shit on any that's not any to shit university. on school that's just the reality but, but you know what you said something about school that's important too school is your net first networking opportunity. It teaches that's, you how to deal with people. But that's just your first network. It's like it's like it's your first that's networking so opportunity. I got so many of my friends that went to CAU that look out for each other. Mm -hmm. Like, cause it's your first networking opportunity. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to college, so I always had that chip on my shoulder. That was part of my underdog story. I'm like, fuck, I didn't go to Clark. I didn't go to NYU. So 
I went to Atlanta Metropolitan College. Nobody even knows who the hell that is or what that is. So I got to come in the room and work extra hard, I but I did. And I use real life skills and that's how I learned. I use people skills. Music business is a people driven business. It's not about who's the best, it's about who made me feel the best. Mm -hmm. But then who made me feel the best and who also is the best. So it's like a mind fuck. Like I gotta make you feel good while pulling the best out of you. Cause I can make you feel good and we get nowhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got, we made 50 songs, you wrote every last one cause it made you feel good, but we got nowhere. Yeah. So I also gotta make you feel good, but pull, I gotta seduce you and teach you. Yeah. That shit is hard, man. Absolutely. So what advice would you give to the next generation of people coming up in the music industry? Ne you know, always remind yourself who, who you are and why you love it. Mm -hmm. Always remind yourself why you love it because I'm telling you, as has been discussed, uh, you got to almost have a spiritual shield around you. Like, because like pe you will ha you'll be questioning yourself, people will be questioning you. Um, it's, it's a really finicky business and if you hot you hot if you're not you're not so you always and there's a lot of directions that you get pulled in like okay work for this work this work this and it's like you got to always remind yourself why you love it that that moment you had when however young you were when you first felt it, you always got to bring yourself back to that moment so if that's why you know i truly believe in 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 doing the work and, and really taking the time to do it because that's when you build that muscle of like, okay, can't nobody tell me nothing because I know I have the skill set. Yes. I know I'm able to do this. And so through real confidence and real experience, building that spiritual shield around you. And and that that's, you know, don't, don't cut any corners. Mm -hmm. Do the work because if you cut a corner, it might be tomorrow, it might be a year, it might be 10, 20 years it's from gonna now. It's going to show up. It's going to it's back. gonna show up on a stat sheet. It's back. gonna show up. Yeah, it's gonna come it's, back. And, you, and not only that, the people that didn't cut the corners are gonna peep it. Right. And they gonna like that's like me telling you, man, I want the musical too. And you like, oh yeah, you know such and such and such. And I'm like, yeah, you no. like, you're the fuck. It's no way you went yeah, to music yeah, school yeah, and you yeah, don't yeah, know this. Yeah, it's no yeah, way you. Yeah. It's no way. That's why when people hear me talk, I stand on my shit because I'm like, bro, you can't tell me nothing. Not only that, let me tell you something. I, I I'm gonna say this to people that's listening, dog. I learned from movies. Like, I never had a teacher. I, I refer Rock to the movie Rocky IV a lot, right? Because Rocky was fighting the Russian in Russia after he killed his friend in the ring. And the pre everybody's there, and everybody had every reason to hate Rocky. But he would not stop. And at, at, I don't give a damn where you're from. I don't care who you are. We are all humans that have wanted to be loved, that have been rejected. And when we see people who are unafraid of that rejection, who are not, who are willing to come back and fight and keep coming, at some point in time, you got to cheer for them. At, like, like at some point in time, Jeff, you're like, I got to get this dude a fucking chance. But you better be ready. <laughs> that's what, that's what, yeah. that's what I mean by being prepared. Like, yeah. you was waiting for your whole life for that one moment for somebody to say, Lauren, I'm on my way. You, dog. I know. I've yeah. just met you today, and I know you knew. Oh, this shit is my. I feel yeah. bad for anybody else who showed up because this is my opportunity. This is. I talk to y'all. I mean, I, you know. That's real. Man. You got I'm, this would be the rejection that builds you for your yeah, next opportunity. Exactly. But for a motherfucking fact, I'm driving two and a half hours to come get that job. Mm -hmm. Period. So yeah, there, oh, there was a big conversation around R and B being dead, and as a person who's really involved in R&B how do you feel about that and what can we do by the way you have done the best R&B song oh, in the I last 18 that, months man. you have the the her damage record oh yeah that is by far the best R&B record of the last man, 18 months Ooh, I don't can't think that. of one better big shout out to the whole squad Aunt Clemens Cardiac Tara Thomas and uh her of course <laughs> and yeah man it's just uh it's uh yeah it's an honor to be a part of it what else can I say you know she uh I've known her for a really long time, and uh, it's been it's been just a thrill of a lifetime to to watch her evolve into who she is now. So, um, yeah, y'all see how smooth he is. Uh, he, hey. Let me tell you why I say that. He understands. As soon as you give him the light, look what he does. He could have kept the light. Mm -hmm. He could have been like, "Yeah, I did," but let me tell you what he did. He shared Shouldn't the light with others. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you why that's important. If I know you gonna give me the light. I'm going to always give you the light. Mm. And if I know you going, some people just act like it was all them. But if I know you going to say, yo, shout out to Ray, because Ray was just, 
I'm gonna give you every opportunity because you gave me the light. So and speaking of which, I'm tripping because I'll be remiss not to give a shout out to the goats, the real goats of this R&B shit, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, man. Come on, but, man. But 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 Yo, fire. And and yeah. So to, but to, to to answer to go back to your question, that's so interesting that this conversation is is going around now because I as somebody who loves R&B, I remember a time where. There really wasn't no R and B. It was all EDM, and yep. all of our favorite R and B artists we was doing EDM, which is okay. Hold on, which is okay. Oh, you don't even know. Our, we, we did we a did show that, called yeah. EDM. EDM, EDM money, money mm-hmm. killed R and B because mm-hmm. it was just too much money in it, and it was like you had to make. And I remember that time. And shoot, you know, I was making R and B still through it all. Yep. And there was a few of us out there still doing it, and. But we, you know, got into EDM too, and just kept again, kept kept yeah, with, the, with the, exactly kept adapting. That's what we do. We adopt, we adapt, we evolve. But it's then around 2014, you know, like Kaylani, SZA, Bryson, her, and there there started to be a whole movement. And then once you had Ariana Grande doing "Thank You Next," boom. Mm. The, the gate is open. Switch Boom. It. R&B is here. It's pop music. Let's go. T- number one on Billboard, R&B music. So it's so interesting to me now. I feel like in my lifetime, R&B is at a a real peak. A real mm. peak. So I'm I'm a little, myself a little confused. not confused. How we get here. How, how <laughs> we get about R&B being dead. Because look, it's not, I remember the 90s and 2000s, I mean, early 2000s, we had some amazing R&B yeah. music. I Let I mean, that's a fact. So I don't know if it's that era, but it's certainly not maybe 10 years ago. It literally, I felt it was dead. That I wasn't going around saying it's dead, but I felt like, oh, wow, really nobody cares about R&B music. You Yo, know? shout out to Tommy Brown and, and Victoria Monet because I always say this, Thank You Next was a... It was a it was a, a 2018 or every year it came out Sierra record. That was a Sierra song. Like everybody, mind you, everybody else was trying to give Ariana Grande all those big vocals because she could sing. It goes back to what we spoke about earlier, where it's like just because you can sing your ass off, don't mean you have to sing your ass off, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? So when when Ariana finally came with that simple "Thank you, next," like I, that probably had to be so hard for her to have to just like pull back all the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but. It came and it changed R&B because it made people see this shit is really about just being authentically yourself and saucing it out. And that was the time where they pulled from Max Martin and that whole crew and said, let's try it on these, you know, young black kids and see what they do. And <laughs> they fucking delivered. Now, not my, that's my family, but they deliver. Sometimes, Big sometimes facts. because we have friends, we don't. Nigga, that's a superhero story. Nah, exactly. We we got to give them their we flowers get, yeah, too. And, and yeah, absolutely, I I think t- I think if I'm not mistaken, Tommy was working with Ariana, but that was but that, but big it was the moment where yeah. he took over. Yeah, because they because they the kind of he was the, he was the B side. He was yeah. the B team. It was like, yo, Tommy, we're gonna let you do. We're gonna let Max do the first ten. He's gonna get all the singles, and we'll give you three or four yo, records for your team. But big shout out to Tommy. Big, yeah, that's my. Wait, brother, can I man. ask y'all something? It's gonna start something up, and I'm sorry because. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just y'all, y'all just inspire Uh-oh. me. And Ray, you gotta answer this too. And it's on the spot, so mm-hmm. everybody, we just pulling this off the top of our head. Top vocalists of all time, like our vocalists, not singers, not the songs, vocals. Who has that instrument? Give me three, just three. 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 Oh, thank you. Oh, I mean, definitely Aretha has to be there. Hello. For me. What? You know what I'm saying now. It, it, it's a tough one for me there, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's Donnie Hathaway Ooh. on there or... Um, I like this. Oh, my God. It's just, honestly, it's really... It's just, nope, oh you got to answer. Gosh, Come on now. Just, it's again. your preference. Yeah, oh and that's a big thing. It's, 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 it's whose instrument would you love to mix with? Matter of fact, and I'm going to ask you a question. Give me a read the record that you like. Mm. I feel like Jeff would have been there. I feel like I know the record already, just meeting you. I feel like and, it's... And, I mean, there's too many to even list, but it's just one I could think of easily because I have a three-year-old daughter and we uh, we have a vinyl player in the living room and we put on a something he can feel by Ooh. produced by written by Curtis Mayfield mm. for Aretha and uh, man, we just dance around and the, I hear that vocal performance every day of my life and I'm like, oh I feel like you would have did. You make like, me feel like a natural woman. I feel yeah. like that's a record that if you were around in your peak, that would a record you would have done in the room. Yo, 
Honored. I appreciate that, man. Wait, y'all trying to distract me. Okay, go ahead, Tamara. Give me back my three vocalists. So you gave me two. Okay. I need one more. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I think that's like, and Ray, Damn. I'm coming for you, too. I want my I, three vocalists from you. I'm going to regret my, I'm going to have to come back on the podcast. And <laughs> my, but this is like, the best I mean, part about it. That's the best part about it. Everybody, I got to redo my interview. I got to ask them. It has to be Marvin for me, you know what I'm saying? Oh. Good one. I'm going to go to Tamara. I'm going to say Aretha Franklin. I'm going to say Whitney Houston. I don't think there's a vocal performance. Me and L.A. Reid always argue about this because I always hear them. I'm like, I don't think there's a better vocal performance than Don't Make Me Cross yeah. One More Do uh, I, I have nothing. I don't think there's a better. Yeah. I'm not saying that that's the mm, best ever, but I'm saying you can't give me a record like that vocally is better than that from anybody alive. So I'm going to say Whitney Houston, I think, is the best singer of all time. Period. Um, I'm going to say Aretha Franklin. And then, um, you know who I'm gonna say, bro? Because I just feel like we don't give, we don't say his name enough. I'm gonna say Luther Vandross. I was just about to say that. I was, uh, about, to, I was, about, to change, I was about to change. I was about like, to change like, my yeah, answer. Like Luther. I was gonna let you finish and say I actually have to change my. No disrespect to anybody I mentioned. I have to agree with he you. He was so smooth. He was, I think, one of the best vocalists. And I know this because somebody showed me that clip. Because I was like, Stevie was always had my best voice. Yes. And oh. then I saw that clip of Dion Warwick, Stevie, Stevie Luther. And I think it was Whitney yes. singing together. And I'm sorry, Luther gave it to all of Bruh. them, man. Is and he, that just, clip? he had the best voice control. I'm going to exactly. and it's one the most more, dynamic. And it's the one, most dynamic. Period. And there's one more who I'm going to give my bonus just because oh, I have to. I didn't give no, no, you a bonus. No, 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 no. Because I don't it? even Let think people consider is. him a great vocalist. Ooh. But what he did with his instrument, which is vocals, Barry White. Oh. Bruh. And he changed Playing the sound game, and everything. Yeah. Like he was so interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. All right. <laughs> he was so. No. 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 Yeah. Look, listen. I got a big show we're gonna do, and I need to be a part of it. We're gonna do it out here, and it's gonna because I want to do a show about R and B, but I want to do this with like Everybody. real, mm -hmm. and I want to like because you know I feel like Rolling Stone releases top singers. Who was in the room and who, who said it? voted? No, like it just, it just in my mind is like I want to know why. I'm so and happy I, you said Luther, man. I'm so yeah, happy. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I do feel he doesn't get in that conversation, but he really, when I saw that clip, I couldn't believe that he actually, like, and it's not a competition. Yeah, not no, but you're right. But, but, but he, make like, it, he made it look effortless, like, with, on the, on the, um, uh, I just don't want to stop. Yeah, I mean, like, bro, if you, but if you listen, that was a hard song to sing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It don't stop. It, it don't gone. stop. It's yeah. like he just no you, breathing. I'm a shining yeah. star. It's like, bro, that was a hard song to sing, and he pulled that shit off. Absolutely. What What about that clip of him singing "House Is Not a Home," yes. where Dan Warwick is 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 crying? Mm -hmm. I literally tear up watching the live version yeah. of his. I mean, that's one of the most dynamic yeah. vocal performances of all time man i like, love this shit by the way i this to me no this, me too I, man so this is another reason for this show it was like i love this shit so much and i feel like it's our job to carry the greatness when i came into the music business you had to know certain things mm -hmm. You can just come in here and say, I'm a producer. Okay, if you're a producer, you need to know certain things. I don't you don't have to know everything. But if you're a hip hop producer, you better know all hip hop, who did what, who wrote what, who said what. It's just I, and to me I just feel like these we are the new time capsules that carry it. So people see it and be like, damn, I never thought about that. It's the way verses did. Verses reminded us of what we used to love and be like, damn, I didn't even think about that. So to me that was another thing. But Tamir, go ahead. You wanna get into uh Credit check? Yes, I text you a credit check, but I, I, got, I got it. I got it. But, <laughs> I no, thought no, I you did. Text me, uh, put your money where your mouth <laughs> oh, okay. is. Okay. Oh yeah, let's do credit check. So, no. Ray, you want to tell him okay, what credit so, check is? Okay. So you said something earlier, Jeff, and to me, it, you said flowers, and I, I, I don't like the term flowers because flowers is what we give to people at their funeral, Die, right? It's cool yes. though, and to me, I feel like I want my credit. Period. Right and 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 what I'm because I can leverage that if you give if Jeff Giddy is who you are says Ray Daniels did one two three for me, I can take that yeah. in the room and say look at I, I I can spot greatness look at this guy proves it so credit check is for us is an opportunity for you to give people credit who you who you might not always have an opportunity like someone who you like you know what I want to give this person credit because they'll take this little clip. I mean, it might be something as simple as show it to their kids. Like, I told you yeah. I was doing something. So is there any people, few names that Absolutely. you just want to give credit it. to? Two people, really, that I have to give credit to is one, uh, Gerald Johnson. Okay. A friend of mine. And he, uh, we, we, like you said, we, we met at Berkeley. Yeah. When we were kids, 18 years old at Berkeley. And 
twenty three years later, we still doing business together. Mm -hmm. and we, you know, we we still best friends, and I still trust him yeah. for call him for for advice and opinion. And uh, he's he's a incredible executive, incredibly knowledgeable on music, and has a real passion for music. And uh, I'm I'm sure a lot of the folks listening are familiar with his work with the Recording Academy and Universal and many other things. But yeah, Gerald Johnson is one so person need, I so, have. So somebody have. people need to know Gerald Johnson and know the importance. Of yes. his. I love that. And another person is Josh Edmond, and uh, Josh has has been just the closest uh to me as far as as far as a business a, a a real formal business relationship and he's he's my publisher but he's a lot more than that i mean he's like my he's like my creative partner you know yeah. and, and he's uh i don't know when this podcast is is airing but uh there's some some new exciting news that we have to, uh, josh has to announce soon i'm not gonna say just yet Aww, but but nice. yeah he's doing it's been exciting to watch him way, work his way up and i mean let me just tell you there was a moment where I, I have to pick up my daughter from school. I didn't have a, 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 a childcare one day, and I yeah. had to pick her up. Then I get a call, you know, such and such, big client, yeah, needs you right now. I'm like, man, what do I do? I said, Josh, can you come by? He came by. I mean, that's not a rec regular yeah. publisher. He came by to watch my daughter get the, for a couple yo, hours. Shout until, out until, to Josh uh, Edmund. Ed, yes, sir. Josh, I want y'all to all to know, every publisher I work with, I don't fuck with none of y'all. Y'all are not going to come watch my kids so I can go to a if session. Not if you're not coming kids. to watch my kids, if like I, I tab will watch my kids. I know Tab will come watch my kids for sure because that's my brother. But I, you just set a whole new tone for like, Hey, with talent, when y'all watching this, when your right. publisher say, I've been working hard for you, ask them, have you babysitting my kids? Right. Because Josh <laughs> that's Edmund, new, that's new Josh question. Edmund babysitting Listen. John Giddy's kids for him to go to a session. We got, that's incredible, bro. Wait, Listen. I really want to play Put, um, put Your Money Away Up. I know, but I, I, small I, little... I got you, but I just want him to know, I don't even know who Josh is, but shout yeah. out to Josh, I fuck with you. That's incredible. Watch my kids so I can he go said, to a session. He came and said, yo, go get those copyrights, man. I'll, I'll watch the kid go. Get that's out. Go amazing. get those copyrights. Yeah, that's that's different. We're going to give you this clip. I hope Josh posts this. Josh, you need to post this clip. This is going to get you some jobs. <laughs> this type, this clip right here is going to get somebody, Big John, somebody going to see this and be like, yo, get Josh Edmond in the room right now. I love that. So, all right, so next one. We have this thing called Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, you've done very well for yourself, so you can afford $20 if you don't want to answer a question. Uh but we're going to give you three options. You have to choose to sign someone. You have to choose to develop someone. And you have to choose to send someone home. You can tell us why. I would love to know why. But And if you don't want to pick, if you don't want to pick, you got to donate $20 to the feel Creative like Academy. Gonna, feel like I'm going to be making some donations today. <laughs> <laughs> Stand so, on it. I'm still, I'm still, honestly, I'm still sitting here thinking about, the, like, I didn't say Otis Redding on that anyway. What? Man, see? No, that's, no, that's one see? of my favorite voices of all time. Yeah, 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 I got like oh six or something. No, no, no. I cry, I cry listening to Otis. Like, so... Anyway, well, Olympics I'm still, only gives this out is three tough, medals. Man, this is tough. Well, well, that's the whole point, man. But this is the thing. It, we wake up with no decision. You are a successful producer, so you probably wake up and it's like, yo, such and such needs a record, such and such needs a record, and such and such. And you got to pick and say, I'm going to focus on this one yeah, now. And right. usually the that's one you right. focus on is the one that taps into you, by the way. Wow. The one that you're like, I'm giving it to her. Like, Teron, one of them tell you about Teron, I don't care who he's in the room with. If Lizzo calls... He's going because Lizzo is his girl. It's a couple of other ones like that, Sierra, Rihanna. But it's like you could be—I could be in a room with Michael Jackson, came back from dead, and he wants me to work. <laughs> that's cool, but yo, Lizzo got need me right now, and that's important. But that—that's a whole other story, man. We got so much. I don't even want to bore you, but we ready to go into sign, drop, develop, put your money where your mouth is. If you don't want to do neither one, you ready? Here's your first one. I'm—I I was gonna—I'm gonna make it a little easier on you for the first one. I'm gonna take it easy. I'm gonna give you a rap one. T.I., Ludacris, Lil Wayne, all in a prime. Who you signing, who you dropping, who you develop? All in the prime. All in the prime. You're the head of a label, you're the producer, you wanna you gotta focus on these acts. So, okay, I'm gonna get the hard one out of the way. I feel like I feel like Luda between between the radio and the other things that he was doing, I feel like he would have been okay. If I if I if I had to <laughs> drop anybody, I feel like he would have been Okay, so we dropping been. Luda. Um. Uh. I mean, got got to sign Lil Wayne. You know what I'm saying? But this is tough. This, he been, he been rapping since he's 14, bro. Yeah, you got. Yeah, you, you got to sign. And I mean, this sounds so stupid to me to say develop Ti. You gonna man, put Ti up? In the, I, gonna put Tip in the middle? I'm, I'm donating. Let's go. I can't even. <laughs> Hold on, you donate? Oh, we got twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars to the kids. All right, cool. We, 
Okay, cool. Let's go. We got it. Okay, now I'm going to make it a little harder on you. Her, Summer Walker, SZA. Oh, good one. It ain't fun if I just donate. And no, it is. Not. The kids win. And hey, listen, let me say, I'm say no, we're going to gonna, gonna feed try. them kids today. You can just go feed them kids today. I feel like if I drop Summer, she's going to channel that that rejection and, and write the most amazing heartbroken oh. okay. song. He's so good, I feel like, man, I, he's I feel good. like if I, I like drop it. Summer, man, I like I'll that. service the people. I'll serve the people, <laughs> like and the okay. people will get the best heartbroken like record that. of all the time. And you know what I'm saying? I feel like... Uh, I feel like uh, okay. It, it, it it's actually hard for me to answer because I've known her since she was you know she was a kid essentially, and I've helped develop her and 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 help. I I would I would develop I would uh, uh develop develop her. Okay. And, and sign scissor. Okay, so oh. sign a scissor, developing her, drop it summer. Okay, cool. Uh, this is painful. I know it's painful for appearance. I already can see. I can see it in your face. The pain for oh appearance. Oh my god. All right, go on. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. It's, it's gonna get more fun. All right, you ready? Anderson Pac, Childish Gambino, Bruno Mars. Ooh. Oh my god. This is. We giving money to the kids. We giving money to the kids. We sending people to college today. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna start again. I feel like I feel like with with, with with Donald, I feel like he just he gonna get it figured. Yes. No, you know he gonna write a movie. No, you. <laughs> Damn, this is hard because I know Bruno was on on a second deal before. He, yes. You know, so if, when you was talking about getting dropped. Yeah. I was like, damn, but that actually serves that people helps really 50 well. Cent, like, Bruno Mars, exactly. Alicia Keys, they all got dropped and became top. Yeah. So, so you know what? I'm gonna sign Donald because he he already got it. Whatever, Bruno, I'm gonna drop him because because he uh because he gonna be he became Bruno after he dropped exactly, yeah. and then Anderson would develop him. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, cool. Whew. Sierra, Monica, Brandy. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this fun? <laughs> it's also interesting if you know that some of these folks personally, and mm -hmm. then you, I might might want to make a different decision mm -hmm. based on the positive oh, or, or not so can, positive oh, experience. Donate that twenty dollars to the kids, and the kids get some. <laughs> All right, let's just donate. Okay. Donate, there you go, my man. Yes, <laughs> we got forty for the kids. Forty for the kids. Yeah. The kids. Can, by the way, just so we know, this is a real nonprofit. It's called the Creative Academy, and it's a it's a school for producers and creatives. Uh, my A and R guy runs this a nonprofit, and literally we have producers that he's ran through the program that has won Grammys. So this is real stuff. I love it. I love it. Okay, cool. Let's go. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, Travis Scott. Oh, this doesn't get easy yet. Just oh, out. my gosh. <laughs> Listen, I'm donating. I can't. <laughs> no, seriously, I can't even. Yeah. This is so This is so tough. We I'm have the like, $60 for the kids. You get 20 You, you get 20 I love it. I love it. Okay, cool. Let's keep going. Run through it. Are we, we still? Go. Oh, my no, God. No, no. Hold on. We got like, we got like, we got like, we got like uh, six more. We got like six more. <laughs> okay, cool. It's, it's, it's not. Okay, cool. Sierra Monica Brandy. Uh, we, did. we did that, I think. We, we no, donated. we didn't do Sierra Monica Brandy. Well, no, we did Monica Brandy. No, and we Sierra did her, Monica. Summer Walker, Scissor. We literally we so did. We Anderson did Anderson Pop, Childish. I'm pretty sure we did. I'm like a million thousand bazillion percent, percent too, yeah. sure we just did it. Tell you how we did. Who did who did he drop and who did he sign? No, he I, donated, I, I donated the 20 cash. Oh, 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 my bad. That's probably why. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm looking at it. <laughs> Usher, Chris Brown, R. Kelly. <laughs> what? This is supposed to we get easier. We, we definitely dropping Robert, okay? Yeah, we definitely, <laughs> Thank you. That's Thank what, you. That's, that's what we do. That's the okay one. That's the easy one. That's the easy one. We got to drop Robert. He got to yeah, go. And, and then, like, uh, uh, us, we, de we signing us, you know what I'm saying? But, and Chris, you know, I would love to develop him, just get offer him something, something different than, than maybe he's been doing. I like it. Okay. Yeah, so, cool yeah. Doja Cat, Nicki Minaj, Cardi B. Oh, my goodness. Okay. No, nah, look, look. I, Cardi's one of those people that I think she's gonna really keep flourishing and, and growing with with some development so yeah. that's one that we could we could definitely develop developing um uh doja she definitely getting signed in my opinion doja Mickey's is out of there listen no yeah, ad libs no ad libs let I'm him sorry. get his story out nikki nikki yeah she might just go you know what i'm saying go back to the drum board figure it out again you know okay she, <laughs> okay. she's good okay cool so um boys and men joe see drew hill oh jesus christ Ah, boys to men have to get dropped. I'm sorry, like you know, what I'm saying, yo, I love them, love them, love them. They go, they they got to figure it out. They got to do the solo thing. You said, you said, Jodeci, uh, uh, Jodeci and Drew, Drew Hill. Hill. Um, Jodeci, Jodeci's getting signed. Drew Hill. Okay, we gonna we'll keep, we'll keep working with them. Okay, cool. I got we got two more. All right, 
because uh, they trying to rap me like I'm not, <laughs> I got, like, I, like I'm not the one paying for everything. But it's okay. <laughs> got two more. All right, this is this is mine. Mine is Neo, Trey Songs, The Dream. Oh, I can use that. Dream. dream. Shout out to the Dream for being uh, one of the very first people to be nominated for uh, Songwriter of the Year at the Recording Academy. You know what I'm saying? He, as an artist, maybe, yeah, we we going to have to figure that out again. Uh, so we, we dropping, dropping the dream. We dropping no! the dream. Sorry. <laughs> I love it. Let's go. Let's, we, got, we, got, we got a rap. I got, he got one more after okay, this. So we dropping the dream. We, uh, Trey? What are we going to do with Trey? We're we going to keep working with Trey. We're going we gonna to develop Trey. And yeah, we putting we out Neo. Yeah. Neo's incredible. Here. I love Neo, so. Neo. Okay, last one. And this one is from Tamira. Alicia Keys, Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston. I thought that was a good one. It's decent. We we putting out Whitney. Definitely. Um. Now you beefing between. Jeez, Thank you. A, I thought okay, it was I'm a good one. I'm donating. I can't even. Yeah. Yeah, I got forty dollars. Thank you. That dance is on you to make sure that the Creative Academy gets the eighty bucks. You can cash app them, whatever it is. All right, all right. So this is the God Show. So I do have to ask you: mm-hmm. Do you consider yourself a goat or underdog? Nah, I, I'm gonna see myself as an underdog. You do? I, I want to. I'm gonna keep. I want to keep seeing myself as an underdog. There's a great uh, clip of, of Pharrell telling Kanye, like, "Listen, when you get there, even when they tell you, don't believe them." So I, mm. I, I really, mm. I want to. I want to stay there. I want to stay the underdog. That's what keeps me driven. Michael Jordan always had to have some kind of a thing. narrative in yeah, his head. Somebody said something head, wrong. So Somebody said something about his mama. Exactly. So he gotta go <laughs> beat him. So same with me. I feel like I gotta be the the, the slept on the underdog, so I could really keep pushing. I love that. So what's so, next for you? Man, we got the J-Lo album coming out in a few Ooh. months. I'm really excited about that. Shout out to New York. Yes, yeah, right. That's right. And we got <laughs> a, a, a Hosier project coming out in a little bit. Um, this and, man and is a working on of... copyright albums. He's, yeah. he's not working. He's working on copyrights. Period. Yeah. Shit and, that's going to be around forever. Mm-hmm. Man, a couple. When, when is this airing, by the way? We, 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 we got a lot In a couple on. weeks. About a month, yeah. So in about a month, me and Tehran will have a, a, a Some great fire. song. What? Fire. Let's go. That I'm helps, amazing, helps keep my I'm kids going to school. <laughs> I, yeah, Chloe, the artist Chloe. Perfect. We have a song coming out. So yeah, those are things I'm excited about. So guys, man, I just want to tell you, Jeff, you are a goat to us. Uh, we wouldn't interview people that we didn't think they was goats. And if we didn't, we have this thing called the underdog story. And this ain't an underdog story. Oh, right. I love this is a thing. triumph story. So we just want to tell you, thank you for having us. Thank, thank you for welcoming us to your house. And we wish you nothing but the best. And if you guys are listening to this, follow this man. Fuck with this man. Because I I'm like, I like don't really like a lot of people. And I can immediately see, if I had an artist, I'm knocking at your front door right now. Because I can tell you're going to sit in the room and care. And that's what it's about. Wow. So shout that. out to Jeff Giddy. This is The God Show. We out. Woo, yes, thank sir. you.